Friday, June 4th probably. Or no, I think it's the 3rd. I'm on my way out to go see the Gymshark crew. So we decided that we would wear normal clothes. So I'm wearing this uh, Forever 21 top. These Levi's jeans. These are actually like bright blue mom jeans that I bought when I was in university like forever ago. And I cut them and bleached them and destroyed them myself. And they still fit. They're a little bit tighter than they were back then though. And I'll show you, sorry my life is a mess right now, but this is some jewelry I bought from Forever 21. Um, I just thought I'd show you guys. Brown leather choker. I got another black one. I'm probably gonna remove that. Oh, and then I also got this like long one that you tie up from Aldo. And these suede pieces are from Forever 21 too. every single person ever so that we can go upstairs on the escalator. It took us like 20 minutes to get down the street, which was supposed to be a one minute walk. Nikki was being stopped so much. The coffee there. Look at her butt. That butt though. That's what she does. I'm vlogging the people. <laughs> hey, that was the first time I vlogged the butt. It needed to be on my channel. Yeah, Ben. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I also want to apologize for the complete lack of content on my YouTube channel. It's just been crazy for me with the move and when things get crazy and busy and stressful for me, I tend to want to hide. So I apologize for that, but I am really excited because after this video, this is the last Toronto one, I'm introducing a new series, uh, which isn't like a month old. I just started it a couple of days ago and I'm vlogging my week leading up to the Gymshark World Tour. So I wanted to do a little bit of a cut with intuitive eating. So look out for that in the next video. So this footage here is from my workout on June 6th with my client Kaylee. Kaylee started working with me about a year ago and she's just such an awesome client to work with. She is goal oriented and so dedicated to her training. I often find people who want to do fitness for themselves and have strength goals as well as hypertrophy goals in mind experience, they tend to be uh, the most driven and passionate about their training. So it's absolutely a pleasure to get to work with Kaylee. Um, and it was super fun to do this workout with her and film it. So we're doing triples, so eight sets. This is called cluster sets. She's running a DUP deadlift phase. So cluster sets are a good way to work on speed and technique. You usually use a lower percentage. Some good cues that I teach to help 
with a deadlift, you want to grasp the bar at a shoulder width grip. Um, if you're doing conventional, your grip is going to be outside of your stance. Um, and then you're going to pull the bar right up to your shins, kind of shrug up and pull your shoulder blades back and down. And then you are going to sit your hips back as far as you can and almost as if you were to let go of the bar, you're going to fall back on your butt. That's how you should feel because if you can hold your body stable enough, that can transfer through and your body can actually act as a lever to help lift the bar. So rather than thinking of to a weight with a string on the top and you pulling up on it, it would be more analogous to using a crowbar under the weight. As you can see, Haley's form is great. As she pulls her hips back, she's kind of her knees push forward a little bit and that's that's what works for her. Um, keep in mind that everyone has different body proportions. So everyone's squat, bench and deadlift is going to look different. Particularly with me, I have very long femurs in proportion to my torso. And even though I'm 5'2", that can happen. You can have a really, really tall person who has a long torso and short femurs and they're gonna their squat is gonna look really, really good. When you have longer femurs and your arms are long enough, you're actually at an, an advantage for deadlift. So that is why my deadlift is much stronger than my squat. My record deadlift is 270 pounds but, and my squat is only 200 pounds. So that's an almost 100 pound difference. That's a big difference between lifts. So I clearly have a body type that's geared towards deadlifting rather than squatting. I am just weaker on squats and they just don't look as good with just my body and flat soled shoes. That's it, man. Like that's how they're gonna look for me. And it's just the way that it is. And trust me, I've spent years and blood, sweat and tears, whatever, on trying to fix my squat. Um, and I have, I've honestly fixed my squat a lot and it looks a lot better than it used to. It feels a lot more comfortable than it used to, but I am still always gonna get that forward lean because it's just the way that my body is. That's just that's just how it is. Like I can't, I can't change it. All I can do is uh, wear heeled shoes and wear knee sleeves and that will help me get a little extra knee flexion and knee torque but as it is I'm just not geared towards squatting so you can see Kaylee does have long femurs as well so her squat looks pretty similar to mine um, I think she has a little bit more of a squat advantage but she also does have really strong glutes so she tends towards leaning forward and you can see when she gets more fatigued in her sets she uh, tends to let her hips rise first and she kind of good mornings out of her squat and that is super super typical for either people with long femurs or glute dominant people and if you are both then it's you're gonna have a crazy squat morning but you know what that's the way it is and if you are lifting for hypertrophy then all you can do is try to work on staying as upright as possible and trying to make each rep look very consistent uh, even if it is you always do have a slight forward lean um, but if your hips tend to rise then you can work on front squats to try to strengthen your quads a little bit more um, and if you are a power lifter then honestly your one rep max is like you can you can fix your squat if there is problems with your squat through specific training but at the end of the day if you're lifting on the platform it does not matter what your squat looks like you just have to get the weight up. You have to hit depth and you have to get the weight up. And if there's anyone who's a testament to this, it's Lane Norton. I know he's very famous for IFYM and uh, flexible dieting and all that, but he's also a world level power lifter. So he, uh, not this past year, but the year before that, he went to worlds and he won um, gold in his weight class for squat. Well, it's deep enough. Oh, it's deep enough. Right. Stand up tall, stand up tall. So after we finished up with the squats, we moved on to cable pull throughs. So Kaylee, um, she has very strong glutes and her quads are developed as well. So at this point in time, we are working on bringing up her hamstrings. So I actually gave her a cable pull through variation that is more uh hamstring focused so we are taking a narrower stance and there's less of a knee bend and there's a much more hip bend and she's actually focusing on anteriorly rotating her pelvis sticking her butt 
out and up and um, leaning as far back into the pull through rather than sitting back. So sitting back and squatting back into the pull through will actually activate more glutes. Uh, one of my favorite exercises ever, these are gliding leg curls. So uh, usually gliding leg curls are done, you can either do them on a Swiss ball or you can do them with the TRX, so TRX leg curls. And I got the idea of doing gliding leg curls from a study that was published on um, or it was could have been a meta-analysis, I'm not sure at this point, but which hamstring exercise is the best exercise in the, uh, for EMG activity in the hamstrings, and the gliding leg curl was the best. Um, the TRX and gliding leg curl were the best. So uh, as you can see, you're actively keeping your hips in an extended position. So that means that your femurs are in line with your torso and uh, you have to recruit glutes and upper hamstrings to do this. And then throughout the range of motion, you're uh, isolating a knee flexion. So uh, as long as you can keep your hips up then and keep your body as stable as possible, your hamstrings have to work really, really hard to pull your knees into flexion. So bending your knees and pulling your body up. It's a very difficult exercise. I would recommend starting with both legs and doing as many reps as you can. Um, and then if say your glutes fail and you can't hold your body up with your butt, then maybe just like prop your arms under your butt and then complete a few more reps. So, but try to get as many as you can without holding your butt up in the beginning and then work on trying to get the full set by holding your butt up in the air. And then after that, Kaylee has a goal of bringing up her arms. Uh, so we worked on doing some bicep curls. We did just a standing barbell bicep curl. I like to do mine on the easy bar. And you just wanna try, try to work on pinning your elbows in one position and not letting them move around a lot. I kind of like to uh, put mine by my sides and uh, just try to rotate the weight around that elbow joint so you don't want the elbow joint kind of moving around. Uh, and then that helps isolate the biceps a little bit better. And then after that, we did a spider curl. So it's like a high incline preacher curl. And with this one, you want to work on supination. So that means in an anatomical position, your hands are supinated. A supinated hand is one that can hold a bowl of soup. <laughs> and then a pronated hand would be one that's facing down to the ground. Back of your hand is either up or facing forward. And when you supinate, you're going from say a neutral hand position uh, up to holding that bowl of soup. So that's kind of what you're trying to do. So a common misconception is that the bicep is the strongest elbow flexor or strongest muscle that can curl your arm. But in fact, there's a muscle that lies kind of to the side underneath the bicep, uh, which is called the brachialis, and that's the strongest elbow flexor. So when you're doing exercises uh, where you're curling, with your arms to the side, you're going to be using mostly brachialis. When you flex at the shoulders a little bit and you're doing exercises like isolation curls and preacher curls, you can isolate your, your biceps short and long head a little bit better. And furthermore, by supinating, you can isolate your biceps even more because brachialis doesn't supinate the forearm, it just curls the arm. So biceps supinate as well, a variety of different curl movements is the best way to build your biceps all over. So that's gonna conclude this voiceover. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys learned something. I don't often do an informative voiceover. This type of informative voice recording is something that I usually do with my clients and I get fulfillment out of that. And I also don't get hate because I find as a woman who is uh, providing informative content you just get so much more resistance and people wanting to kind of knock you down so honestly i'm a shy person as it is so i don't really like exposing myself to that uh, but hopefully this goes well hopefully people enjoy it and hopefully i don't get too much hate for it so i hope you guys enjoyed thank you again so much for watching and look out for my next 
video series. Okay, bye.